Now, you don't quite do this in the book, but I'm interested in, in what a society that you would support, what it would look like, OK? I, in really practical terms, how would I get to work? What would I live in? Mm -hmm. What kind of food would I eat? How would I heat my home? Do these sorts of questions. How different would your society be to the one you critique in the book? Well, you're right that the book is not you know, a, a checklist of an ideal society. Um, but I, I think that, that, that the most important thing is that this is our society would live within the boundaries of what our planet can take. So we know we need to be cutting our emissions by between 8 to 10 percent a year because we've waited so long. Those numbers come from the Tyndall Center here um, in the UK, a very trusted institution. And in order to do that, we need to expand the parts of our economy that are already low carbon. We need to roll out renewable energy. We need to move very, very quickly to 100% renewable energy. We know that the technology is there. The cost is getting very low. We've seen the price of, of solar drop by 80% in five years. So the technology is there, but there is this problem that we have to burn fossil fuels in order to get off fossil fuels. So we also need societies in which we consume less. So we, will, we would have to have cities, you talked about um, you know, how, how you'd get to work. I don't know exactly how you'd get to work, but preferably we'd all be taking more transit. We would be biking. It might look a little bit more like Copenhagen than London, which isn't terrible if you've, if you've visited. Um, it, 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 urban design would be a really key part because it isn't just about flipping the switch from one energy system to another. It's also about uh, designing more intelligently so that we reduce our energy needs. And the technologies described, are brilliant and they are but there. What you've described, which incidentally are a lot of technologies that capitalism has produced, like solar Not panels and no, but I mean, you the know, the, 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 has played a significant but, but role. What you but, haven't yeah. said there is why you'd need to overthrow the entire economic system to get at that. You could say to private companies, look, guys, in 2030, there'll be no more coal burning in, in, in Western countries or no more gas burning. And, and why, have, and why haven't job? our politicians said that? And uh, you know, what I'm saying is that we cannot do the sensible things that we need to do because we have a political and economic system um, that, is, that, but, that is based on short-term profit right, and, 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 and short-term growth. But you're, blaming the companies, but you're blaming the companies I'm who are the agents the of system. capitalism. But, I'm, I'm, but you're, the reason why the politicians haven't done that and made companies mm -hmm. get rid of all these fuels I would imagine, yeah. is that it would involve telling the people a rather painful choice confront, a rather point, painful I, I don't uh, think that's true. Choice. I mean, I, I, don't, I certainly... That's you don't certainly, think it would be painful for a politician to I tell us that, that energy they, prices will be three I times what they I think that there are. are ways that they could do it in a way that was much more painful for the fossil fuel companies than for everyday consumers. I think we have been biased in favor of policies that have passed on the price of this, of this transition to consumers because our governments have not embraced a basic polluter pays principle. You know, we, when the tobacco companies eventually were forced to pay a big chunk of the cost of get, helping people to quit smoking and to pay some of the health costs because they knew about the connection between cancer and smoking for a long time and they didn't act. The fossil fuel companies have known this for a long time. They're digging us in deeper. So we've had really unjust responses to climate change, which have um, but, but I'm unfairly I'm to passed the why you have to overthrow. I mean, basically, the thesis you've given so far blames the governments for not doing anything about it, well, actually, rather it, than it, blaming the companies. It now, blames the collusion between governments ah, and, right. and, and, right, and, tobacco, and fossil fuel companies. Tobacco I mean, makes a good point here, though, doesn't it? Because it does <clears> show that when governments against the, the will of the companies, the, the tobacco companies yeah. in that case, yeah. you can put the taxes up and actually so you really get they? smoking down. So well, why it haven't is down. They? It is. But why haven't they done it with fossil fuels? I mean, Because it's painful for the voters. I don't think it's because companies. it's painful for the voters. I think it's because it's painful for them because they get penalized in the form of losing campaign contributions. They get attacked oh. with television ads. That's certainly the barrier to change in North America. Uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the outsized power of the most profitable industry on the planet is warping our political system. And the argument I make in the book is that the, a big part of the reason why we have failed to address this crisis, when we have addressed other crises in the past, whether it's a hole in the ozone layer or a public health crisis, mm -hmm. is because this one hit us at the worst possible moment, at the end of the 1980s, at the moment of maximal free market triumphalism, mm -hmm. when, when, when our governments embraced the idea that there was something wrong with regulating corporations and taxing polluters and, and intervening I'm, in the market. I'm going to give you 20 seconds just to say what mechanism you use to deliver to get to the 
to the world you're, you're, you're wanting. Uh, clearly capitalism isn't it for you. Just 20 seconds. Well, look, I think we need, a, a, we need a whole range of policies. It's not about overthrowing the system, but it's about radically changing it. And it, right now, this system can't even deliver the reformist uh, model that you're talking about. 